Welcome to episode 22 of the Black Adder podcast, where I think you'll be consuming a fair amount of Greek. No doubt, we've had plenty of folk tell us they can't work out what the heck we're talking about <laughs> in this podcast. Ah, too bad. Exactly. <laughs> how are you? I'm not too bad, Jerry. How are you? I'm okay. I'm expecting a little more from the second episode. The first, there was a lot of exposition, a yes. lot of scene setting to be set. But now the scene is set. I'm hoping there'll be no exposition and we can just crack on with the, the comedy. That'll be interesting to find out about. If it's true or not. Yeah. Shall we? Okay. Summary? Absolutely. Crack on. With King Richard the Fourth away fighting a crusade against the Turks, Edmund is shocked to learn evidence may exist to bring his brother's lineage into question. Provided secret letters by the King's friend Dougal MacAngus, Edmund decides to interrupt the St Leonard's Day festivities with his big announcement. But can he prove his case, or will his claims embarrassingly fall apart? We shall see. I can guess. Yeah, unfortunately we start with more exposition. Woohoo, there's an opening scroll, it's kind of like Star Wars but much worse. What do we find out? In 1486, the second year of Richard IV's historic reign, and also the year in which the egg replaced the worm as the lowest form of currency, King Richard departed England on a crusade against the Turks. Oh, we have to be given all this before we can get to the, the comedy. You won't find this funny if you don't know this. Also, the bit about the egg replacing the worm isn't funny. Doesn't make sense. No, nobody used worms as currency. No. Why would you? Unless they did, and that's other history that we didn't know. Yeah. Anyhow. Richard apparently has left his son Prince Harry in charge while he's off crusading. And Baldrick, we see, whispers to Blackadder, and he understands the implication that there is a chance for some real power now. Yeah, and it's good to see the king acknowledge Edmund, even if he gets his name wrong. Edna, was it? I think it's Edward this time. Edward, okay. I think it's Richard III calls him Edna. Right. <laughs> we then have the credits, and we leap forward 12 months. Absolutely. Where we see Blackadder wielding this new power. Yes, he's urging the scum to return to the castle or they will be slaughtered. Ah, who is it? What army is it? It's sheep. Yeah. So, in this 12 month period he's not uh, gained or been able to wrestle any real power away, has he? No, he's simply doing the jobs his brother doesn't want. <laughs> Inside the castle, Harry has news for him. Splendid news. What's that? Uh, the, their father, Richard IV, is going to be home no later than St. Leonard's Day. Tell me about St. Leonard's Day. <laughs> well, there's not really a lot to tell. I don't think it's an actual day that we mark now. Well, not anymore. Um, certainly St. Leonard is just your average saint. Is he? Yeah. They're all pretty average. Yeah. <laughs> your, your average saint. Yeah, you can look up, Wiki not, you know, you want, a, you can look up Wikipedia and yourself. Yeah, <laughs> he's not a patron saint. He's not got any great deeds that I'm aware of. Yeah. Perhaps back in the day he was more significant. Well, maybe, when he was getting sainted. I grew up in St. Leonard's Road. Did you? There's a St. Leonard's Church at the end of it. Do you think there's more than one St. Leonard? Is it the same St. No, Leonard? No, I think there's just the one St. Leonard. You sure? Yes. Okay. Well, you we should know more about it then. I don't care enough. Fair enough. Neither do I then. Let's <laughs> move on. Uh, Harry uh, asks Edmund to perform a couple of tasks ahead of these celebrations. Yeah, he is put in charge of the frolics. And the drains. <laughs> He clearly despises his brother, but doesn't have the, the gumption or the, the bravery to do anything about it. Twelve months of chasing sheep and straightening the royal portraits, and now this... The bastard. <laughs> the bastard! If only he were, my lord. What? If only he were a bastard, my lord, then you would be regent now. Ah, yes. 
And then one day, you would be king, my lord. Ah, yes. Yes, I would be king. And then what? You'd rule the world, my lord. Precisely. It's just not fair, you know. Every other damn woman in the court has bastard sons, but not my mother, oh no. She's so damn pure, she can't go down in case she notices her own breasts. Baldrick is a bit more savvy, would you say, in this series? I would say that. Politically savvy, certainly. He's a bit more tuned in. He's not, the world's not passing him by. Mm -hmm. And he's not obsessing about turnips. No, I mean, at this stage, he's an advisor. Absolutely. To, to Blackadder. Yeah. He actually, he almost plays the role of like the, um, the little man on your shoulder, you know, the mm. conscience almost. You think? Not Co conscience. That's the wrong one. The devil. Devil on the <laughs> shoulder more like, yeah. Yeah. Just kind of putting ideas in his head. Up in the Queen's room, she is less than impressed with the imminent return of the king. And she tells her maid so. The maid's surprised because she thinks that when the king returns, he'll want to come to her chamber and make mad, passionate love to her. Yeah, but she responds that, yeah, that's the problem. It's difficult to, to sleep when this is going on around you. Or in you. We, we heard last time about the, the king's particular problems in that area. Yeah, she doesn't like feeling like the outside of a sausage roll. They're looking forward, nevertheless, to the St. Leonard's Day event. Sorry, just on your point of his little problems, it would be a, a Greg's sausage roll then, you know, not a proper one. You're always disappointed. It's more pastry than anything else when you buy it from somewhere like Greg's, a high street. You know, if you get a proper sausage roll, it's very meaty and there's a lot of filling. Anyway, sorry, have I taken that too it's far? Like throwing a chip of acid in the no, channel. No, 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 that's... that's, <laughs> that's Anyway, the two of them are enthused about the St. Leonard's Day event to one degree or another. Yeah, they mention the upcoming party and also mention the, the eunuchs. The Queen likes the eunuchs and she wishes she'd married one. Over in Blackadder's room, he is in trouble. Yeah, he's seeing a young lady out saying, no, fine, fine, could have happened to anyone. Unfortunately, this clean-shaven, bearded woman was part of the, the frolics that he was in charge of. She was the only frolic that he'd managed to acquire to this point. So Percy and Baldrick consider the alternative act, which include... Eunuchs. Mm -hmm. But Edmund's not too excited about that idea. And the jumping Jews of Jerusalem, which he's even less excited about. Uh-huh. And an act containing four chickens of some sort. Yeah, Jerry Merriweather and his egg-laying chickens, but there's also a, a theatre troupe. There is. Sir Dominic Price, I think, and the magnificent strolling Wufarunis, who are going to perform Death of the Pharaoh. Yeah, I'm not sure which I would prefer out of that motley crew. The egg-laying chickens. Yeah, at least you could eat the eggs well, and no, the chickens. Well, currency we learned at the start of the ah, show. True, true. Things get worse, however, as he receives a note informing him that the eunuchs have cancelled, and in a rage... Signs and sends off their death warrant. Seems quite fair. Certainly. Nevertheless, despite all of this, Edmund is not yet desperate enough to book Morris dancers. No, that would be utter desperation. Harry shows up. He clearly wants eunuchs, Morris dancers and bearded women. Traditional St. Leonard's Day entertainment. Yes, but he is unhappy when he discovers that apparently Blackadder has had to let the eunuchs go. Yeah, he thinks that things should be kept the way they always are. You have these three acts, that is St. Leonard's Day. Worse still, Sir Dougal McAngus, the King's Supreme Commander, will be in attendance. And the eunuch is his favourite form of entertainment because he's Scottish. Not sure what the connection is there. Is it a particularly Scottish thing? It sounds racist to me. I've never come across a eunuch. Have you? Just the one. That one night. Mm. But listen, he didn't look like a eunuch. When in Thailand. <laughs> I've certainly never seen one in Scotland. Harry leaves. And Blackadder goes into a rage about the Scots. We heard that at the Yeah, top he of the dials the racism up to seven. Quite right. Percy struggles with the concept of it's all Greek to me. I actually really liked this little um, back and forth. It was fun. It was nice wordplay. Yes. What is it he talks about? Well, he says it's if it's like Greek, it probably is Greek. Yeah. And Edmund's trying to explain that it's not Greek. Definitely not Greek. It's just 
like Greek because he is equally ignorant of it. But Percy can't quite grasp that concept. And Blackadder resorts to threatening to, to gut Percy. Seems fair in the circumstances. Back to the task in hand, Blackadder tells Baldrick to get himself a dress. He's got a beard. Seems reasonable. They also decide to hire Bernard the Bear Baiter. But have to remind him to bring his bear this time. <laughs> <laughs> bear baiting was quite a big, a big thing back then, I think. In the royal court? In general. In entertainment. Oh well. That's why there's not so many of them around. Yeah. Down in the banqueting room. Grand hall, you might say. Yeah. Harry offers a toast to his father's return. Just as Dougal McAngus rides in with his overnight bag that contains a severed head and also the spoils of a recent war. Yes, spoils of war. That's what I've written. He gets his horse a seat at the table. He does? What's his horse's name? I can't remember. I didn't write it down. No. Okay. I don't think it's important. It's not get mentioned again. If I don't even see the horse again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he tells the Queen that his father Donald sends his regards, which seems to send her into a little bit of a tizzy as he takes his seat beside her. Yes, beside the, the king's bit of a rumpy pumpy, <laughs> as she is described. At first, she is unsure who his father is. Yeah, but when he explains it, it has an effect on her. Yeah, she certainly looks a little uncomfortable, shall we say. I would say that, yes. Edmund comes in and is introduced to McAngus. Yes, by Harry, as the man providing the entertainment. And he is mistaken by McAngus as a eunuch. You can see why that would happen. <laughs> certainly his demeanour and... High-pitched voice. Yes, would, yeah. would suggest he would certainly be the type. He could have carried it off, I think. Things get worse, however, as Harry then offers a choice of reward for McAngus on behalf of the king. <laughs> I'm honoured. All I ask for is a scrap of land. Grant me fair Selkirk and the noble shire of Roxburgh. What? Very well, by the power vested um, in me. Excuse me. Um, I'm sorry to dip my little fly in your ointment, but uh, <laughs> those lands do in fact belong to me. Yes. Well, so perhaps, perhaps he'd like to choose somewhere else. McAngus? No, no, all of Roxburgh and Selkirk. But that leaves me with Peebles. Oh, wait, and Peebles. <laughs> Are you trying to say something, Edmund? Well, I don't know. I, I mean, some people might say, well, what an absurd idea, giving away half of Scotland to a kilted maniac for slaughtering a couple of syphilitic turks. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. I say, let's reward him. Good, good. So be it. <laughs> <laughs> Edmund's change of heart there precipitated by a physical threat from Ang McAngus. Yes. So back up in his room. We should say though that I, th I would imagine we're both in favour of Scotland being passed to a Scotsman. As I said so. Rather yeah. than Edmund. Without a doubt. He has no right to Scotland. None whatsoever. Anyway. In Blackadder's room. We see a repulsive, bewigged and bearded Baldrick who is twirling around in a, in a dress. Not for the last time. No. For Percy, as an enraged Blackadder storms in, swearing to kill uh, McAngus in the Great Hall and Bladder. I really enjoyed Percy's response. <laughs> what was that? That if he does it in front of everyone, they might suspect something. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Bla yeah, that was nice. And Blackadder agrees that something more cunning is required. Now, worth noting this next point. This will be the, the first mention of a, a cunning plan. By Baldrick, yes. Mm -hmm. And they both argue about who has the most cunning plan. Yeah, Baldrick's is to have McAngus stick his head down a cannon and then blow it off. Yeah. I mean, it's not that much of a step up from what he comes up with in future seasons. No. Did it remind you of anything in Colombo? Is it the bit when the guy puts his head in the cannon? Almost. In by Dawn's early light? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets blown off? Yeah. However, Blackadder thinks he has a, a more entertaining solution. We're outside next. Yes, Edmund watches McAngus ride out and then goes down and chucks a woman off her horse and steals he, it. He does indeed. Now surely he would have had his own mount. Yeah, but it's not ready to go. 
Nah, that's true, I suppose. In the forest, Macangus is hunting. This is quite reminiscent, actually, you won't know, of a scene from Braveheart. Okay. Where you think one of the soldiers is going to kill William Wallace while he's out hunting in the forest, but that's not Blackadder's intent here, and it's not that, that man's intent in Bla Braveheart either. Okay. What actually happens here? Well, Edmund is caught in a trap, essentially. Yeah, as he's creeping up on Macangus. But he's not creeping up on him to kill him. That's not what he's, he's here for. What's he here for? He wants to ask him for his help. What type of help does he want? Well, the theatre troupe putting on the death of the pharaoh are down a man. Mm -hmm. And they need a Scotsman. They want to redo the play from death of a pharaoh to death of a Scotsman. Yeah. Macangus is happy enough to help out, but he does mention that he is, he's no actor. No, but he really just has to play a dead Scotsman and he thinks he can handle that. Yes, so this <laughs> Blackadder goes to leave, but ends up where? Is he caught in another trap? Well, he falls into oh, he falls in the weasel pit. Weasel, <laughs> he's, he shouts, watch out for the weasel pit, yeah. and Blackadder is a bit too late to react. Yeah, I think actually Blackadder creeps up at, off at this point. And he's very, he's very furtive in this season, isn't he? Mm, definitely. And we're back at the castle for the entertainment. Everyone is looking very bored as they watch the, the jumping Jews of Jerusalem on stage. As we see Blackadder set in motion his plan. How does he do this? Well, he's swapping out the prop weapons for the play for real ones. He is. As the actors take to the stage, they briefly chat with the exiting Jewish actors. A very familiar face as well, isn't it? Yes. He doesn't think the audience understood the act. No. And we see Macangus and Blackadder look on from the, the wings. But Macangus has some news for him. He's a bit of a, a revelation. He tells Edmund that his dad, Donald, mm -hmm. is probably Harry's dad as well. Yes, because Edmund's mother had an affair with him. He's stunned. I mean, they were just talking about this. Yeah, I mean, he's shocked because his own father only got to do it with his mother as he told her it was a cure for diarrhoea. <laughs> that doesn't really tie in with what we saw last week, though, when he talks about her being insatiable. Uh, maybe it's just that was just a public show of, oh yeah, she's insatiable, we have lots and lots of sex, but really... They don't, because she doesn't like it. Quite possibly. However, Macangus insists that it is true and he's got letters to prove it. Edmund decides he needs to stop this murder so that he can investigate this a little bit further. Yeah, I mean, he realises the significance of what's been told to him here. Yeah. He sees a bigger picture for once. And he seeks advice from Percy and Baldrick. What advice do they give him? Stop the play. <laughs> he intervenes in the play. He adds himself in as an extra character with a fake weapon and stabs Macangus and all is well. Did you think he was going to let him die or not may be able to save him? Yeah. Because you could see that line, like, he's been told, your brother's a bastard, you could be the king. Oh no, he's dead. He can't do that now. Yeah. At this point, when Blackadder was seeking advice from Baldrick and Percy, it was more similar to what we have come to... Yeah, they didn't really have much coherent advice to offer him, did they? No. It was more like a, a season two. Yeah. But even... This interruption from Blackadder doesn't seem to relieve the boredom of Harry and the other onlookers. Yeah, I don't think that the entertainment is going down quite as well as they'd anticipated because they just want Morris dancers and eunuchs and bearded women. Yeah, well that's what you get if you put Blackadder in charge. Absolutely. Later, up in Blackadder's room, he is now delighted and has got his hands on Macangus's letters and he wants to find out more. Good, excellent. It's certainly my mother's handwriting. When did you say these words? Uh, 1460. The year my brother was born. <laughs> Baldrick, get in here. Baldrick, get out there and tell everyone that the rest of the entertainments have been cancelled. Why? Why? Because I told you to, you silly little rat. Now, why have they been cancelled, my lord? Darcy. Well, tell them I have a very important announcement to make. <laughs> Does that mean I have to take the dress off? Help get up, 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 get up
No. Yes. 10,000 of the Turk in there armed with scimitars. And your father with a small knife for peeling fruit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> His dastardly laugh mm. reminds me of Skeletors. Yes, I was trying to pinpoint that myself it's almost as if they have tried to make this his catchphrase then he does a different laugh at the end yeah it's like here is sinister blackadder being evil and here's regular blackadder it's more irritating than anything else much like the rest of the characterization hmm. anyway back to the banquet the final act is finishing off and no one seems very impressed with the show although the queen did like bernard <laughs> The rabbit better. <laughs> <laughs> Edmund arrives to make his announcement and it goes off smoothly. Yes, he is very confident. He walks on stage, accompanied by Percy McCangus, and announces what he has discovered about the, the lineage of Prince Harry. Now, <laughs> that's quite um, quite an omen. Is it? Well, there's obviously some doubt these days about Prince Harry's you lineage. Say that. They'll, they'll hunt you down and shoot you if you say things like that on red tape. Let him go for it. <laughs> the thing that I found bizarre was his mother's reaction because she must know mm -hmm. who is a bastard and who's not. But yet she's kind of ambivalent almost. She can, almost seems to confirm what Blackadder is saying. Yeah, I think she thinks the, the game's up. Yeah, but she must know that Harry's not a bastard. Or maybe she doesn't know. No, I'm sure she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> no. Harry on learning this possibility, immediately renounces the regency and goes to join a monastery. Mm -hmm. With Blackadder now being given the title until his father returns. So he's got what, he's, what he was after. Yeah, and the moment is right for Blackadder to announce that the king is dead. Yes, and will not be returning due to the, the perilous conditions he was last seen in. Percy then declares the king is dead. Well, Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I must admit, I did quite like this little bit where the, the chant at the, the king is probably dead, long live the king. <laughs> so is that him officially being king at this stage? I think that's it, yeah. I mean, there will be a ceremony, I'd imagine, in, in due course to uh, formalise things. But I think, yeah, if you accept that the king is dead, you, someone immediately steps yeah. into the breach. At this point, there's a, a hiccup. Yes, predictably, the king then arrives and greets his trusted friend, Macangus very warmly. So does this mean that Edmund was never king, or that his reign is over? Yeah, I think he was. Yeah, I think he was king for a moment. A moment. <laughs> anyway, Edmund explains to his father what has happened. Yeah, I mean, his father quickly senses the atmosphere in the room and demands to know what Enid is doing in his seat. <laughs> Unfortunately for Edmund, he hasn't done his maths. No, but we should say that he. He looked bolstered by this recent news or what he thinks, the information he thinks he's got because normally he just sort of wilts away but I think this time he tries to regroup and uh, put on a, a confident front. He does, he does. Um, sadly for him, mm. the dates on the letters show that it's not his brother who's the bastard. No, it would appear to be him. He does not take this well. No, and the king demands an explanation. My liege! The reason I have gathered you all here today is to try to get some proper justice meted out against this Scottish turd who has clearly forged these obviously fake letters. Let me see them! No, I ripped them up in his face so no hint of that filthy slander can remain. <laughs> you come in here? Fresh from slaughtering a couple of chocos when their backs were turned, <laughs> then you think you can upset the harmony of a whole kingdom? I challenge you to a duel to the death! Um, yes, all right. <laughs> Excellent idea! After all, it is St. Leonard's Day. There's meant to be some entertainment. <laughs> good, very good. Take your pleasures. I don't know what a, a choco is, but it doesn't sound good. Well, our friends at Urban Dictionary have mm. a couple of possibilities. One is worse than the other. Are either of them good? Yeah, well, the palatable one. Okay. <laughs> These are both Australian terms, apparently, which makes no sense in the context. No. But anyway, uh, an Australian army reservist, it's a 
contraction of chocolate soldier, a, someone who wouldn't stand up, who would melt in the heat of battle. So that would make sense if he's only been fighting folk who aren't much opposition. Okay, that's fair enough. Unfortunately, the other one maybe fits a bit better. Mm. Um, an ethnic person, particularly Mediterranean, a contraction of chocolate frog, which would be rhyming slang for wog. Yeah, I think we'll just move on from there. Yeah, I don't think we can approve of that no. in any way. A nauseous looking black adder takes his place for this duel as his father orders the killing to begin. And after a bit of posturing by Black Adder, McCangus ends up with a sword at his enemy's throat. Black Adder reaches the bargaining stage of panic. Yeah, he, well, he pleads for his own life. He offers everything he has, lists them all, every possession, mm -hmm. <laughs> including his collection of wigs, which McCangus seems to appreciate well eventually he declines these uh he declines this bribe initially he draws his sword back as if to to slay him only to reveal he was joking yes and he is interested in the wigs yeah and as he leaves mccangus has a, a dig at blackadder by telling him that he hopes life won't be too dull for him now that he can't pass laws over scotland and what does blackadder whisper in response Yes, that he wouldn't pass water over Scotland. What a racist he is. <laughs> well, he's not meant to be a nice guy. No, that's true. He's a snivelling little fool. Yes. <laughs> Unpleasant. Up in the king's room, what happens? Harry is delighted that his father's returned, but the king is not. No, he misses the smell of blood, and the queen apparently has a headache. Hmm. Before he tactfully tells Harry to tell the Archbishop of York to get stuffed, with regards to a request for him to join his formation Italian dance class. That, yeah, that's the tactful rather than the honest answer. <laughs> I can only imagine what the honest answer was going to be. And we finish up in the rampart. Is that what they're called? Is that the... Yeah, the king asks if McAngus is leaving and Harry says that Edmund and McAngus have become firm friends hmm. since the duel and Edmund is showing him around the castle before he goes. That sounds promising. Yes, but out in the ramparts we see him being shown a cannon. Yeah, very close up. This reminded me of the Cavalier years mm -hmm. when they revert to the, the terrible plan because um, everything else has gone wrong. Yes, and I think the last thing we hear is uh, the cannon going off. Well, we hear the cannon going off and Richard hopes it's the Turks attacking the <laughs> castle and Harry's worried it's the drains, uh, but Edmund runs in and says there's been a a messy accident. Yeah. And the two, well, the two of them run out and he jumps for joy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end. Yeah. Okay. I think um, if we're being positive, what I can certainly say is I think I enjoyed it more than last week. It got more laughs. Yeah. Still not great. Still not anywhere near the standard of the, uh, the other seasons. Well, I think that you've got a fundamental issue in that the Black Adder character isn't good Yeah. in this iteration. So I, th I think even in seasons two and three and four, you can kind of identify Blackadder as the everyman. You know, he's the guy that you identify with who's a bit smarter than the folk around him because everyone thinks they're smarter than the folk around them. Mm -hmm. um, but this guy, you can't identify with this guy. Nobody thinks they're a simpering fool. Yeah, there's little um, empathy or, or sympathy for him, as you rightly mentioned there. I think in the, the other seasons, certainly in the, the fourth, you can understand why he acts how he acts and what he does what he does. Yeah. And... It, even in the, the the second and the third he's put in a position where there are people with power um, uh, abusing that power Yeah. but he in this situation has got power he's in a position of, of, of wealth and, and fortune and it's hard to feel sorry for him no one's really treating him that badly no if he just kept it's... his head down and be quiet and just got on with it he'd have a, a perfectly happy life I would imagine yeah maybe stand up for himself a bit more yeah that's it mm-hmm did you have a favourite line this week? I did. I think it was the, the speaking Greek. Okay, mine was when Percy said if you kill him in front of everyone they might suspect something. Mm -hmm. ah, decent. Okay, will we have a look at the production and information in any trivia? Well, people like that, so why not? <laughs> 22nd of June 1983 was the original air date. You would have recognised Dougal McAngus. Yes, uh, the guy from Taggart. Alex Norton, who was born in 1950. This is his second of two Blackadder appearances. You're looking puzzled there, Ian. Yeah, how did that happen? He was in the original pilot. That ah, was unaired. Not even mentioned yet. Yeah. As you noted, he 
is probably most famous for his role in Taggart, as well as Pirates of the Caribbean, The Count of Monte Cristo, Braveheart, The Bill, Local Hero and Gregory's Girl. He's married to the actress Sally Kinghorn. Robert East plays Prince Harry. He was born in 1943. This is the second of six episodes. He's in the entire first season. He has also been in Doctors, Hobby City, Dave Allen at Large and Emma. Interestingly, he is only seven years younger than his on-screen father, Brian Blessed. He does look a bit younger, but it's probably the shaven face that makes the difference. You mentioned the familiar face of the, the jumping Jew. Yes. Angus Deaton, born in 1956, an actor and presenter, primarily known for Have I Got News For You, but also Waterloo Road, 98, One Foot In The Grave, Alexis Sale Stuff, KYTV, Mr Bean and Pram Face. I wouldn't say any of those things are what he's primarily known for. Well, we'll get there. <laughs> Richard Wilson is his son's godfather. And what you may have alluded to there, he is very well known, certainly in the UK, for being sacked from Have I Got News For You for a, a sex and drugs scandal. What would probably now be considered a fairly minor. Oh, compared to most of the, the TV presenters of, of the day, yes, this is, oh, you know, fairly legal. Yeah. Uh, consenting not, adults. Well, yeah, all involving consent, yeah. Yeah, I think these days. Uh, the messenger who came to the door to deliver... Uh, some news. Yeah, about the eunuchs. Yeah. yeah. He was uh, David Nunn, died in 2012, aged just 50. The first of four Black Adders. His last appearance was in uh, Christmas Carol as one of the, the piggy wiggy Singers, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he has also been in Grange Hill, The Pickwick Papers, A Place to Hide, and Metal Mickey. What trivia do you have, if any? I actually came across a little note when I was looking at the. because there was a. Thing in the DVD, the order of the episodes is a bit different. So mm -hmm. I was trying to find out something about that. I didn't really find anything about that. But I did find that the show apparently originally ran after a series of Shakespeare productions. Mm. So it was maybe put in that context. You can understand a bit more of some of the the thought behind the history element. Sure. The, uh, you know, if you get a overflow audience. I think there was even some actors who appeared in both. Yeah. The fellow who played Henry Tudor in the, the first episode, for example. Yeah, as you mentioned there, this was originally meant to be the fourth episode broadcast, but they changed it for whatever reason. Yeah, but on the DVD box set of all, the series, it is listed fourth. Mm -hmm. This episode is very similar in parts to the unaired pilot. Ah, I wonder if we'll ever see that. Is it available? Have you seen it? I have not. If anyone has and knows where to find it, you could let us know. I'd imagine it's on YouTube, no? I don't know. It's certainly not in the box set. Okay, I think it is on YouTube. Okay. We might cover that, but we might not. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Next time, we've got the Archbishop. Ooh. Looking forward to that. I think that'll be quite good one. I hope. Maybe wishful thinking. <laughs> we can only hope. <laughs> <laughs> so until then, cheerio. Bye bye.